we're going to have 8 billion people in the world soon. 1% of people, if you're in the top 1% in the world, you make like $35,000 a year to be 1% of the world. 1% in America, you need to make about, I think it's 800,000 a year now. So look at that big difference. 1% of the world, 35,000, 1% in America, 800,000. Right. So when you think about all these other countries where people are really, really poor, and now they can put money into a digital asset that has the ability to grow in value. I think that's going to grow the value of the whole space by a lot. And again, I mean, nobody knows for sure. You have to bet on what you believe is going to happen. I'm betting hard on the digital asset being something that most of the world has. Versus something like gold. I was just researching gold because, um, you know, people ask about gold. The thing about gold is right now, if I told you go buy gold, what would you do? How, where would you even think you have to go to Google, figure out where, figure out, is it reputable, figure out, you know, how you're going to hold it, how you're going to store it, all these different options. And, and rich people love gold because it does keep value, but a regular person, a person that doesn't have a, a, a safe or, a, a, you know, a, a, you know, a big place to keep bars of gold. What does that person do versus Bitcoin? You can have a, you can have as many Bitcoin as you want and still live in a, a one bedroom apartment because it's not physical. And I know that's part of the, 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 the the problem with the way people think about things is like, if it's not physical, it doesn't have value, but you have to, you have to change the way you think about that. If you really think about things now, what are the most valuable things in the world? Software. If you think about Facebook is very valuable. There's nothing physical, right? Um, Coinbase, these are apps, apps that are valuable, right? And, and, would you rather a store, even if I gave you the real estate, would you rather the store or Coinbase or Facebook? So physical things don't mean more value. Digital things can be more valuable than physical things and by a lot. And I actually believe it's going to that direction where digital things are going to be valued more than physical things. And I, I kind of think we're already there, but most of the world does not see it. I, I really believe that. Right. Like I used to tell people, uh, probably around 20 years ago, um, I would rather own, um, the dot com of a store than a physical location, right? Like if you own the gap.com versus the gap on the, the, the biggest gap in the world, which would you rather own? I would rather own the digital gap, the gap.com because it could have way more people come to that store. 24 hours a day. So that makes it more valuable, right? If I have to have, so here's another way it makes it more valuable. If I have to have a physical location, we have employees, cleanup people, stackers, uh, I mean, stockers, um, electricity bill has to close at a certain point because people can't work 24 hours a day. Would you rather that? Or an online store that's 24 hours a day, can ship anywhere in the world. Of course, you'd rather have the, the digital. The digital is more valuable than any physical location of Gap. And that happens with anything now, right? So this is where we really have to stop thinking that if it's not physical, it's not valuable. Digital things are valuable. And they're going to become more and more valuable, right? So when we look at crypto, when we look at gold versus Bitcoin. Rich people right now believe in gold because gold has historically been the store of value. But what happened was about 50, 60 years ago, America said, we're not connecting our money to gold anymore. They got off what's called the gold standard. So now what that means is our dollars are not connected to gold, right? It has nothing to do with gold. So what is what is the value of gold in that, in that case, right? Like, does it matter for the dollar? And then you think about usability. If I walked around with a bar of gold to pay for something, who's going to take that? 
right? Hey, you know what? I want to buy these bag of chips. I got this bar of gold is worth a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred, whatever it is. Can you like cut off a little piece so I could buy this bag of chips? And I know Bitcoin, same thing. People are like, yeah, but what about Bitcoin? Same exact idea. Yeah, but with Bitcoin and decentralized finance, I could borrow 50 cents off of that Bitcoin and Ethereum, send it to a debit card and swipe it and pay for that bag of chips. All this could happen in, in minutes, less than minutes. And I've done it. I do it every day. When the world is able to do that, what do you believe they're going to do more? Carry around bars of gold? Or have digital assets where you can do what I just said. I believe is no brainer. But again, everybody needs to make their own decision. That's why they say, do your own research. Part of what I'm telling you, I'm telling you my research and what I believe. But you can't take what people believe and just take it as your belief. You have to do your own research. Say what you believe. Because there's people who, they still believe gold is going to be the thing. And they could be right. I could be right. Something else can happen where we're both wrong. Who knows? But at the end of the day, everybody's working every day of their life to create money and hopefully one day not have to work anymore. Right? So if everybody's on that same trajectory to try to get to work every day to get to a point where I don't have to work anymore. What are you doing to get to that point where you don't have to work anymore? Right now, the current things are, I got a 401k. So every year my job gives me, they match my 401k. But right now there's limits to the 401k. The government says you can invest up to 10% of your, I think it's 10% of your salary into your 401k every year. And then if you have a company that's willing to match is up to them. They'll say how much they're willing to match all that. So let's say you're a regular person in, in America, you make, let's say uh, 40K and you're able to invest 4K a year and your, your bank, I mean, your, your company matches, um, let's say 4K too, even though not always the case, but whatever, that's 8,000 a year you get to invest. So now if you invest 8,000 a year for, I'm going to pull up a compound interest calculator and do the math real quick. You invest $8,000 a year, which most people are not doing. But let's say zero investment up front. I'm not going to show this on screen, but I'll do it real quick. Um, 8,000 a month. I mean, 8,000 a year for, let's say, 20 years. Um, hold on one second. 8,000 divided by 12. That's $666 a month. And let's say um, you invest that. In the stock market, which grows about eight to twelve percent a year, so I'll, I'll I'll bring it high to ten percent. Now that means in twenty years you will have four hundred and fifty k, right? So now, if you wanted to retire, here's what what happens: you can sell off pieces of it over time. Well, every time you sell off a piece, you pay taxes. So let's say you reach the age where you don't know, you no longer have to pay a penalty. If you sell it before your retirement age, you have to pay a penalty. So let's say you are already 65 plus and they're going to raise the retirement age too. So let's say you get to that number and you want to take out 50 K. All right. 50 K minus taxes. Let's say it's about 40%. That's messed up, right? So that means You've been saving all this time. Every time you want to use it now, it's like income. That's the normal way versus with crypto. Let's say you did the same thing. You invested 8,000 a month. I mean, a year. It grew the same amount, 10% a year, which I believe you can invest more than 8,000. If you use your bills as leverage, you can, I believe crypto is going to gain more than 10% a year. It has been growing hundred percent a year on average for, by the time it gets to 10% a year, talking about many years from now. Okay. So hope, I mean, maybe not financial advice. So let's say you had the same 450, but it was in crypto. I don't have to sell it. I could leave it growing at 10% a year. And I'm going to show you something. If it's growing at 10% a year and I'm at 450 and I say, all right, you know what? I want to send 50 K this year. 
Instead of selling 50K, I borrow 50K. So now I borrow 50K, but that 450, let me show you what that will become in 10 more years. Well, let me tell you what it will become in 10 more years. In 10 more years, because I didn't have to sell it, I was just borrowing off of it. That became $1.3 million. But again, that means I am still investing 8,000 a year. If I'm continuing to invest 8,000 a year, it becomes 1.3 million. So what could you do? You can borrow enough to pay your bills and borrow enough to pay the 8,000 to invest the 8,000. Right. And if you're doing that, the numbers way I'll gain it. And that's just with 10%. I actually believe it's going to be much higher than that. Right. And again, that's up to you to do your own research. And this is why using your bills to leverage and, and buy assets to me is a no brainer. It's just right now I'm to the point where I'm trying to figure out how to explain it to people. And of course I'm teaching people at retireyourbills.com. And I'm building a, a, an AI, a robot that will do this automatically for you. But again, you could do it yourself by hand. I've been doing it myself by hand for, for two years now, almost two years. Um, I think in February becomes two years, right? So this is possible right now. I'm trying to do my best of getting as many people to understand and do it. You go to retireyourbills.com. It is, I'm trying to start having content that is dedicated to making sure people are doing it. When you sign up for the email, I email you the steps. 